Hello and welcome back to the When You're Podcast, the podcast for when you're doing anything. Today we're talking about when you're watching Gladbeck, The Hostage Crisis. Now, I initially uh, heard about this true cr- about this hostage situation from a true crime podcast called Case File. I forget the exact episode, but if you look up Case File, uh, Gladbeck hostage crisis or something like that um you'll find it you'll find it i found it on spotify it's it's a great listen that's how i i initially learned about this this hostage crisis and then i went on to find that there was a documentary made last year about it and it is absolutely insane i mean if you listen to the the podcast first which i i recommend but if you listen to that first you're already like oh my gosh this is crazy this is this is This is beyond anything you could like, I mean, it's not beyond anything you could think of, but it's kind of like, it's crazy how, how it all happened. And, um, when you watch the documentary, I just, you know, I found myself in this place where I was just kind of like, um, I wouldn't say in disbelief per se, I would just be more like how, obviously I think by today's standards, what they did back then was just like so unethical and so crazy different to what we what we really expect now but it also kind of is like we're actually not that much different in a lot of ways we we actually haven't progressed as much as i you know i i think the sense is that like Back then, you know, you kind of look at it and you're like, oh, what they're doing is wrong. But then, like, something happens today and we're like, that's also wrong, but we're not, like, eviscerating them as much as uh, as uh, as much as we should. But there are instances where we do. So it is kind of, like, in a weird place. Like, we, I look at it and I'm like, that's wrong. And I know that's wrong. But then I look at it today and I'm just like, well, what else is new? You know, so it's why it's like, I'm not totally shocked or like in awe or surprised by what they do in this documentary, but it's more so just the, the, I mean, the guy just holds a gun and is getting interviewed by the press, by the media. And they all just like, they all have a laugh. They all smoke a cigarette together. It was like, it was so bizarre. Oh, spoilers for this. Man, definitely go listen to that, the Case File podcast first. I, I don't want to, uh, you know, I'm not going to go into like full in-depth of like the whole crisis itself, but I am going to talk about it and about the documentary. So if you want to like fully understand what I'm talking, when I'm, you know, you want to un- know about the case, or about the the crime that happened, definitely go check out that. You definitely want to go check out the documentary as well. And then you also um, there's also a limited series called uh, called Fifty Four Hours, and this it's because this whole thing takes you know fifty four hours to get resolved. Um, so definitely go check check all of those out. Uh, Irish, I watched the documentary in German. With English subtitles, it's on Netflix. If you if you have Netflix, and the reason I watched it in German was just because um, I didn't want to have to. I was looking for like the real authentic footage because what they do is that the whole documentary. Uh, you know, let's just let's just spoil the whole documentary. Why don't we? No, no, no. Uh, the the first of all, the crime takes place in Germany. If I if I remember right, I, I honestly can't remember where it exactly took place. But if I can look it up, like two seconds, right? So what I do know is it's it's not in the U.S. You know, so so we got that on our side, I guess. Yeah, so it's in Germany and it's all over the place, really. So what happens is, I mean. Listen, you ever been in those, like, uh, you know those movies or those moments where somebody is like, we're going to take hot, we're going to, you know, they, they, 
they go into a bank, right? They run up into the bank and they're like, we're going to shoot up this whole place if you don't give us all the money or whatnot, right? So they take the whole bank hostage. So that way, if the police try to like stop them, they have all of these people for which they can like kill, they can like torture, they could do whatever, you know, and the police want to save the hostages. That's, that's the priority. The money, the bank is insured. Nobody cares, right? But what's important is when they capture those criminals, two, nobody gets, uh, well, actually, number one, nobody gets hurt. Okay, that's that's the first rule. Number two is that they capture the criminals. And then the third thing is like get any money they may have took or, you know, possibly uh, possibly stop any like what's it called accomplices or or figuring out figuring out the whole investigation, putting all the pieces together, I guess is the, the third part, you know. You can put you can put all of that at the end. So Long story short, the two guys and then later on a woman take people hostage for reasons that are just totally absurd, totally like, I mean, for me, they're absurd. You know, to them, it was like, yeah, it made sense for them to do it. But during the whole hostage situation, like they legit have people with like guns to their head to their throat they have like a whole bus bus full of hostages they're pointing guns at people they're like they're seizing the whole thing and the the press the media you know cameramen uh reporters everybody just surrounding them they they can't get away okay and the police are like hundreds of yards away like they're 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 far you know they're they're not anywhere near where they should be right like when you think of the police maybe you think like they should be the first line of defense you know but these reporters were swarming them they were just all around and then it got to a point where the like one of the reporters was like yo can we can we do an interview real quick like why are you you know they legit do an interview with the guy who's holding them all hostage like he's the the orchestrator he's the he's the front man he's the mastermind behind it all he started it and they're having casual conversation they they light his cigarette like he was like he had a cigarette in his hand but he didn't have anything to light it so a reporter came up and lit it for him and then he starts smoking and then the reporters are like just asking basic questions you know and some are asking like pretty okay questions you know not not to like criticize their like reporting skills i think they were doing okay job i suppose but it was just so bizarre and weird to see them doing that and then i mean the guy hans i mean i forget his name hans jürgen Rosner is his name and dude this guy this guy was just loving the media he was just loving the press he was loving being on camera he was loved he loved talking to the police he loved talking to the reporters he loved talking to everybody this guy was just like I wouldn't say he was a social butterfly but the guy definitely knew how to draw a crowd but I guess that you know that that tends to happen when you kidnap and hold people hostage Yet, he was just kind of like, I hate life. And I was perplexed. I was like, if you hate life, you know, why take all of these people hostage? You know, why not? You know, when did you do it to yourself first? Not that I'm like saying that's okay, but I'm just saying like, you know, that that seems like the go to spot. But instead, this guy was just like, yeah, I don't really I don't really care about life. And I don't care about these people about these innocent people no the the reporter the reporter was like well what about all of these these innocent people right here is like yeah i can't do anything about that these people these people are a part of it now you know there's nothing i can do to uh to get them out of the way and then it was just essentially a chase so 
from then on, like the police time and time again, like in my eyes, and I feel like to a lot of the public's eyes, kind of like messed up the situation over and over and over again because the hostages, I mean, dude, I just, I try to put myself in the scenario of the hostages, the people on the bus, people that they took and whatnot. And I think to myself, like, oh, if it was me, I definitely would have, you know, I definitely would have moved the gun away. I would definitely would have ran away. I would have fought. I would have gone, you know, I wouldn't be trapped there. No way. I would have saved everybody. But you have to think of the moment. You also have to think about the time. You also have to think about the place, how these people were raised. Like, if I was raised, if I was born and raised in Germany, and I just so happened to be on a random bus going somewhere, right? And I'm just like a, a kid, you know? And they these people come up. They steal the bus. They point a gun to my head. They tell everybody to, to stay calm or to, you know, nobody's going to get hurt and whatnot. It's a little bit different. Right? It's a little bit different. And this was around... This was the 80s. This was the 80s. And I wouldn't have the knowledge that I have now if I was living in the 80s. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't be... Uh, obviously, because of the internet, because of the education system, it has definitely progressed from the 80s to, to when I was a kid. So... There are any number of, of circumstances and things that go through your mind. But in that particular moment, it seems fair to be like, if I was a hostage in that moment, I would also be shocked with fear. I would be frozen and I would just do whatever they told me to do. Because if you try to run away, you know, and if you fail, what happens then? Right? Right. So it's probably best not to not to engage, not to fight back. And other than that, just go along for the ride, you know? I I I definitely felt like so many of those hostages were just trying to I wouldn't say they were just trying to go home. They were just trying to but I, I sometimes think about it like, man, what if somebody got, you know, somebody on that bus got fired, huh? Or if somebody was like, listen, I can't go into, they got fired from work. And they're like, listen, I can't make it. I, I got uh, held hostage on this bus. And they're just like, you're lying. You're fired. And he's like, no, 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 it's the truth. And then like two days later, the guy figures out like, oh, snap. He was in the, he was in that hostage thing. Wow. He was telling the truth. <laughs> That's crazy. He's still fired, but it's it's wild that he was on that bus. And then I just I I, I feel like um, there were any number of things that could have been done differently, especially when it came to the hostages. Um, if my I'm trying to think, so. I think there was like the because they're they I'll just say like this: people did die, you know. They did kill people. These these um these criminals, the the people who robbed the bank, the people who took the hostages, they did kill people. And it was, and it's extremely sad when when you. When you look at the full scope of the story. Um, but I just remember thinking about the, the people that died during all of this. I was like, this was so pointless. And it was all, could have been handled so much better. If, um, I think if the police had really took initiative and they were the front, front runners, like they were the first line of defense... And if they were willing to do whatever they asked, really, it, it comes down to as simple as that. Because at one point, the the guys, the you know, the the criminals, the the people who take all of them hostage are um, 
asking the police, the German police to, they make a demand saying that they want like a car, they want some other things, and then they also want a police officer with ID and uh, kind of like naked, but they're like wearing underwear or whatever, and they're going to take that person hostage, and then we're going to let everybody else go. Now, for me, in my mind, I'm kind of just like, all right, I'll, I'll volunteer. I'm up first. I'm, I'll do it. Get everybody else out of there, and then I can, you know, I can handle the situation. You know, at that point, it's just one hostage as a point as opposed to all of these other ones. You know, all of these other people. But the police um, didn't go that route. They they didn't go that way. They instead um, opted to not do any of their demands essentially they they really just didn't do anything that they asked and the communication between them was always so broken it was always so like they would try to get in contact with them but then they wouldn't respond or they get the wrong number or they just wouldn't talk back you know and it was always a a conflict it was always a problem and then it get, got to one point where the police were nowhere to be found. It was just like a bunch of civilians and reporters and random people just looking on as people had like got as the hostage, an, uh, a poor girl, a poor woman, this teenager, this 18 year old kid got a gun pointed at her face and at her neck. And it just it. it it was wild. It was it was completely crazy. And it bothered me to no end. I was just watching it and I was like frustrated that nobody was doing anything. Nobody could... I guess nobody wanted to. And it was extremely dangerous, I suppose. But still, I, I felt like something should have happened. But in the documentary, if you watch the documentary on Netflix, which is really good, by the way, if you watch the documentary, um, it's not it's not told like in the podcast. So that's why I kind of feel like the podcast is the right way to do it. If you if you listen to the podcast first and then you go see the documentary, it's kind of like, OK, I know what they're talking about. I know I kind of understand the, the scene of events that take place. And then when I watch the documentary, you get the visual. You get the visual and you actually see it all play out, how it actually happens. Because the documentary is all real footage that the, the media took that day that they, that they had. And even news reporters at the, like, uh, at the German news station breaking it all down, they, uh, they play all that too. And they, they talk about everything. And it's just... I don't want to say it's like super scary, but it's one of those moments where it's like, if that happened today, dude, if that happened today, I, I don't know. And maybe it has, and I'm just not aware of it, or I'm not just like, don't pay it all that much attention, I guess. But it's more so like, if it happened today, it would be a lot more... I don't know. I, I just feel like with social media, everything would be everything would be turned up a lot higher. But we're also a lot smarter now. I feel. Hopefully, maybe, maybe not. But my point is that if it happened today, I get the sense that things might be things might be handled uh, a lot differently. And we'd get a lot more information quickly, and people would understand the scope and the and the the full uh, situation a lot quicker than than it was on that day. But you also have to think of the times, you know. And I feel like that's what's really because this whole thing was just terrible. It was a tragedy, but it's also kind of like during that time, you know, you have to think to yourself like, well. They they didn't know a lot, you know. They're not they're not perfect by any means, but still, I, I feel like there there were plenty of moments in 
uh, a lot of opportunities where they could have done something and nothing did happen. So, and because I get to see like real footage of everything that happens, I mean, it's so crazy. It's so weird. And there are moments in the documentary where you see real people um, talking about the media constantly hounding these uh, the criminals, following them. Trying to get the story, trying to trying to follow along, trying to do all of that, but then doing absolutely like nothing to really help. It's more so kind of it's kind of like uh, social media, really. It, it's just they don't see these people as hostages or that could that could die. They see them as oh, it's a story. They kidnapped them. They took them and all this other stuff. I'm trying to think. I think there was a moment where. You know, if the if the press and the cameras and all of them weren't there, it wouldn't be as crazy as it became. But because they were there, they were documenting it all, and they had cameras on them, the the two people who were holding everybody hostage were aware and wanted to send mess a, a message to the people, and they wanted to evoke. Uh, is that the right word? They they wanted to spread fear to everybody that like, don't mess with us. We will hurt people. And this is definitely happening. And it just, it's crazy. So the police, I mean, the police back then, I mean, what can you do? That I can't do anything about who they were back then. But as of who they are now and what, we have eventually grown into is that um, they're a lot smarter now, you know, but back then they didn't have every, everything wasn't lightning speed back then. It was a process and it took a process and it was just everything took time. It wasn't uh, they didn't have the information of the two suspects at the time. They didn't have uh, clear motives of who they were or past history and any of this other stuff, you know. It's not until the the reporters and the camera crew and everybody started getting images of them and you could see their faces and you could run a, uh, a profile on them and figure out who they were was when, you know, information could be given to the public where people could figure out what was going on and the police could learn as much about them as they could in order to really understand what they were planning to do and what was their next step but overall i feel like the police in that situation they they uh i mean once you once you watch the documentary it, it really it really punches you in the face you're just kind of like do something you know like definitely help out because when one of the one of the victims got killed, unfortunately, uh, such a sad story. A, a 15 year old boy got killed. Italian, Italian boy. Um, he got killed, and the reporters are dragging his body. Uh, dragging. Uh, they they pick up his body and move him off of the bus where he was killed, and they and they put him away. And um, they're recording all of it. They they got footage of all of it. And it's just horrible. And then immediately everybody's like surrounding him and like surrounding the people carrying him, surrounding the the build or the the room where he's in, and um, everybody's there, and and that's when everybody's kind of like, listen, where's the ambulance? And I'm just like, how is the ambulance not already there? How is there no medical person? You know, there's nobody there, emergency-wise, to, to help these people if they were to get shot. Like, that's a big blunder. And there's no police officer that can administer at least first aid or that can at least carry and take the body and drive it to the hospital if need be. Like, that's that, that bothered me so much. And just seeing that, it just, it was so disappointing. And I felt in that moment, like... I wanted to jump in the screen and, and stop everything, but 
you know, everything, bad things happen out there and there's nothing that I can necessarily do about it, but it just, it makes me want to be better and it makes me want to like think and process the moment. And I try to tell myself that like, in those kind of situations, I would be so calm, I would be so smart, I would do everything right, but in reality, who knows, right? In the moment, you never know. But it's important for me to kind of feel that emotion of I have to do something or I have to be smart, I have to be calm, I have to be rational. I can't just, you know, do everything and anything I want, you know? I have to I have to think about repercussions, I have to think about consequences, I have to think about other people because if somebody decided to be a hero that day and stop these guys, what was to stop them from, first of all, killing you and then killing everybody else, you know? What if you push the gun away but a bullet strays off and it hits somebody else? Like, that kind of stuff, like, runs through my mind all the time is like, what if I tried to fight them but then I end up hurting somebody else? Like, I couldn't, you know, that, that level of guilt would have would have haunted me. So, overall, I thought this, the, the documentary on Netflix was really, it was definitely interesting. And the fact that they used real footage throughout the whole documentary was really something. It, it was um, very rare that you get to see something like that fully uh, documented on, on TV and it has like a, a first person view of it all happening but yeah so definitely go check it out go watch it on netflix and uh listen to the true crime podcast that that it's on it's definitely a, a good listen uh so yeah thank you guys so much for listening and i'll see you guys all next time thank you